Welcome to the WPL Book Drop Podcast. I'm your host, Becky Miller, circulation and marketing assistant, dabbler of donuts, chili and peanut butter sandwich advocate, and believer in the healing power of silence. Joining us today is Anderson, library assistant at the Waterloo Public Library. Anderson is the new owner and writer of a 1980 Honda Express moped in electric blue with a top speed of 27 miles per hour on a good day. Anderson is also a cat foster mom, an outdoor enthusiast, and in a world where so many people have strong opinions on cilantro, she remains cilantro neutral. (laughs) Welcome, Anderson. Hi, Becky. Thanks for having me on the podcast. You need to pick a side on cilantro. (laughs) (laughs) No, I really don't have strong feelings about it. Cilantro for life. (laughs) Okay, so I'm glad that you're here. This is the first time that you're joining the podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at the Waterloo Public Library? So I'm new at the library. Um, I started probably about four months ago. When I first started, I trained in the circulation department downstairs. So if you saw me there, I do things like say hello, check out your books, um, maybe help you get a brand new library card, put a DVD on hold, things like that. Then I moved up to our reference department. I did a little bit of training there about some more in-depth patron questions that we might get. And if you saw me up there, I might show you things like how to access our databases or our local history and genealogy room, help you use the public computers or scan or fax a document. Um, I recently started training in the youth department. So there you might see me on the teen desk or the youth desk, but it's brand new for me. So. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on? Um, So right now I was actually working on a candle take and make project. There were leftovers from this awesome program that Jim did uh, in the summer. And so I thought it would be good to kind of recycle those and reuse them. With fall rolling around and more dark hours, I figured it would be a good time to make those kits up and then patrons will be able to get one and make their own candle. Um, the kit will come with like a tin, a wix, wax, be- wax beads, and dye. And you'll be able to just melt it down, pour it into the tin. It would make like a neat homemade gift or you know something for you to use to cozy up in the fall. Um, I made a few examples. And I also found that by using the hive and some hive stuff, you could really easily use vinyl decals to decorate the outside of the tins. And I think that like would spruce up a little gift if you wanted to make your take and make kit for someone else. Cool, I'm glad that you mentioned the hive. That's the reason that we have you on the podcast today. Uh, We are planning a open house of the hive, uh, our maker space. Can you tell us a little bit about what the hive is for people that may not know? So the Hive is, like you said, our maker space. It's kind of an awesome resource for the community. And I think it's like a room full of possibilities. Uh, It's a space in the library that has all sorts of tools and equipment for kind of like making, making stuff and being creative and kind of, yeah, basically that. Uh, My favorite pieces in the Hive so far have been the button machine, which I have used to make a lot of one and a half inch buttons for different programs and different like outreach activities we've done. The software is really easy to use. It has lots of its own designs and text fonts and all sorts of stuff that you can easily make a button with. Um, Another one of my favorites, especially when I'm making displays and things like that, is to use the Cricut machine. It's like a cutting and creating machine. And I use it for vinyl decals and all sorts of like text and cardstock things that we make to help use our like to help make our displays more beautiful. So I'm excited to try and use it sometime in the future for a t-shirt because I haven't done that yet. So. And then some of the other things I know that we have in there, we have a VHS to DVD converter, or if you wanted to take your old family VHS and turn that into like a digital uh, movie for YouTube, you could do that. I know we have a slide to digital converter. So if you've got some old slides at home, or if you have some negatives, you can scan those and then have the digital copies um, that you can share with your family, say on Facebook. And then we have uh, some sewing machines in there and a serger. 
Although I'm not a sewer. I have not touched the sewing machines or the serger. There's also an embroidery guy, I think. Yeah. Um, so the open house, what can visitors expect of the Hives open house on November 18th? And what are those hours? Okay, so it's Thursday, November 18th, like you just said, and the hours are 3 to 6 p.m. It's a drop-by kind of event, so you can just step in whenever. Um, we'll have staff on hand to help maybe demonstrate some machines, just show you what our machines are and kind of how they work, how to use them. As well as I think, I don't know, are we doing any sort of like crafty, if you're demonstrating? Yeah, we can definitely make some little crafty things. I think it'll be really fun if maybe we show the button maker how you've been making all those buttons. I think we did some for Pride Fest. Um, the NaNoWriMo, is that what yep. it is? Yep, we had some NaNoWriMo buttons as well as Band Book uh, Week. There were a bunch of buttons featured for that. Yeah, so it's like you get to design the button and then you just make it with this little contraption type thing. Yeah, it's basically like you punch out the circle that is going to be on your button and then you'll put a plastic cover over it to make it like a finalized button product. Yeah, awesome. So before we wrap up, we uh, each are going to share a book today. The one that I brought is called Icebound, and I listened to this one on Libby, uh, the library's digital app for ebooks and audiobooks. Icebound, Shipwrecked at the Edge of the World by Andrea Pitzner. Um, so I wrote down some things I wanted to share about this. Basically, it's a nonfiction. It's in the, in the 1500s, they are looking for a new trade route. Uh, these, I think they're Nor Norwegians, and they don't want to go all the way down around Africa to go get these spices in, say, India or China. So they think that maybe if they go up through the North Pole, they can come around down that way. And they actually believe that, oh, hey, it might have like a worm patch up there in the North Pole. I mean, they really don't know. So they go up there on these ships. And this crew is William Barents, and there's like the Barents Sea, it's still in existence because it's kind of a legendary shipwreck that happens um, up there. And they encounter ice, and it's so treacherous, and the ice is just packing the sea. So they have to abandon ship and basically live up there on some uh, land, and they build a little cabin, and they're there all winter, and it's awful, and there are polar bears, which like, it seems every day they encounter a polar bear that wants to come and attack them and men get killed from the polar bear. I mean, it's just scary. I'm, I'm like, I did not know polar bears were this awful. But if you ever see one, stay away. <laughs> um, so they were always caught off guard, it seemed like, with the polar bears. And then they're, of course, starving and having the food and they didn't have fresh fruit. So they didn't have vitamin C. So they're all coming down with scurvy and they're teeth are falling out and they're freezing so they light coal up and then they have carbon monoxide poisoning <laughs> so it's just terrible things happening um and then the endless winter and just their epic tale of trying to survive and how many die and i won't give it away but i very much enjoyed the audiobook that seems super intense it was really like... intense i was like i am never going up on the north pole <laughs> pass. <laughs> so what book did you want to talk about today, Anderson? Um, the book I'm reading right now is Calypso by David Sedaris. And I say reading, but like you, I'm actually listening to it on Libby. I recently went to a show by David Sedaris. I had actually completely forgotten I had tickets to the Iowa City show. And then it was like a week before when our director, Jillian, mentioned that she was going. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I have tickets to that too. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I hadn't had any time beforehand to like listen to some David Sedaris material because I feel like sometimes, you know, before you go to a concert or an author, like, yeah, you will kind of like listen to some of their stuff beforehand. So I'm kind of doing that on the back end of things. Um, I really like David Sedaris. I think he kind of blends the tragedy that is like life in general with a lot of humor and it's fun. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I have to completely agree with you about David Sedaris. So funny. I don't remember which book it was that I listened to on Libby, but I think you have to listen to it through audiobook because it's not the same experience as reading it. I, he just is so funny the way he tells his stories. Um, I remember a story where he was talking about 
those fitness counters that you can wear yep. and like how you've got to count your steps and he became obsessed with not just 10,000 steps but all of a sudden it had to be 50,000 and it was getting really competitive with everyone. I just finished reading that exact story. It's in Calypso and I thought it was really funny. Um, at the end he ends up like his Fitbit dies and he has to immediately purchase a new one because he can't like for a second he's relieved and then he was like I didn't even make it a day before I ordered my new Fitbit. It's so funny. <laughs> Highly recommend. Well, Anderson, thank you so much for joining us today on the WPL Book Drop Podcast. It was really a pleasure. You're very welcome, Becky. Thank you for having me. See, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If you liked today's episode, be sure to leave a rating and subscribe. Thank you.